The Whitman Massacre, a very tragic event, occurred on November 29, 1847. Whether you believe one side's actions were justified or not, most, if not all, can agree that this was truly a sad and terrifying situation. This incident had many layers to it. It was complicated, so to get a full understanding of what happened, we have to go back to the very beginning. Boy, not that far! Like when the Whitmans first met the Cayuse! A couple named Marcus and Narcissa Whitman traveled and moved into the Cayuse territory on a religious mission. They traveled with several other missionaries and along with a group of fur traders. Once the group of white settlers settled, they settled in not only Cayuse territory, but also Nez Perce territory. Narcissa began a school teaching settlers' children and Native American kids. Marcus acted as a doctor for the tribe, also preaching and teaching the Cayuse about Christianity. There were many reasons as to why tensions began to rise between the Whitmans and the Cayuse people. First off, the Whitmans were growing annoyed by the natives because they would frequently ask for supplies. The Cayuse believed, though, that the Whitmans owed them supplies because they, along with many other white settlers, were now living using the land that once belonged to the natives. On top of this, the women's only daughter, Alice Clarissa, drowned and died in the Walla Walla River when she was only two years old. Narcissa blamed Alice's death on the Cayuse, saying it was their fault for not watching over their daughter closely enough. This only caused more tension between the white settlers and the natives. The last straw occurred when a giant measles outbreak occurred. This sudden outbreak was brought by the settlers. Not intentionally, of course. It immediately affected the natives, though. Around half of all the Cayuse people died as a result of the outbreak, and nearly all Cayuse children died. Being a doctor, Marcus attempted to vaccinate the natives, but this only caused more natives to die as a result of their weak immune systems. A man named Joe Lewis also began spreading lies about how Marcus was poisoning the Cayuse, not vaccinating them. The fact that more Native Americans had died than settlers made Lewis's claim sound legitimate. It seemed very possible that Marcus was actually trying to kill the Cayuse. Infuriated, a few members of the Cayuse decided to do something about the Whitmans. November 29, 1847, six members of the Cayuse tribe by the names of Tilua Kate, Tomahas, Kiam Sumpkin, Ia Chalikis, and Oklahoman, and Clokamas knocked on the Whitman's door, demanding Marcus bring them medicine. The Whitman's, of course, let them in. When the, what the Whitman's didn't know was that the Native Americans were hiding weapons from them. I think you know where this is going. Marcus did as he was asked, and it was either when he turned around getting the medicine or talking with the Taiku Kayet that one of the six Cayuse men bashed him in the back of the head with a hatchet. After killing Marcus, the Cayuse then continued to slaughter more men outside. Narcissa Whitman was also killed. She was shot to death by one of the Cayuse men. She was the only woman to be murdered during this whole ordeal. A total of 13 or 14 people were killed, and some sources say 13 while others say 14. After this event occurred, around 50 white settlers from the Whitman Massacre were held hostage by the Cayuse tribe, many of which died while being held captive. The remaining hostages were let go, thankfully, during the Cayuse War, which lasted from 1847 to 1855. Sadly though, the war escalated as the number of white settlers continued to rise. Time later, an elder of the tribe turned to five Cayuse men who said they were involved in the Whitman Massacre. The men were tried and ple pled guilty to murdering the Whitmans along with the other victims of the massacre. The men were hung, which resulted in the start of the Cayuse War. So we have stuff. Is it recording now? Oh, yeah.